Hi guys, so I am packing up for a camping trip this weekend and I'm gonna be testing out a few different pieces of gear that I have not had a chance to take out and play with yet. So let's get into it and see what we've got. So these Hyperlite packing pods are something that I have been looking at for a few years now and I went ahead and bit the bullet and purchased them this year. Um, I'm trying to decide whether or not they're going to work for me. So this will be the first time that I've used them to um, to go out on a trip and, you know, see how I like them. Um, normally, I've got a um, liner bag in my pack. I don't think that I'm going to be able to use this and the liner bag together, which then is going to leave me with having to probably get another one of these for my quilt and things that I don't want to get wet because I don't think they're going to work together very well. So we're going to try it out today and see how it goes. My quilt is stored in the original bag that it came in. It's good to store your quilts and sleeping bags where they are able to fully loft um, so that they're not compressed down into the, into the tiny little bags for months or years or however long you're storing them. As you can see, it is still super fluffy. Ignore any laundry that is laying around on the bed. I'm trying to get some laundry and stuff put away as well today. Um, so I'm gonna take this and compress it down into this small little bag. Um, and this is down, so I do not want that thing getting wet. I have gotten little bits of condensation on it um, over the course of trips and it's been okay, but if I go to these and have to remove this, then I'm gonna need to get a separate one of these for the quilt because this is not going to repel water, I don't think. So, Fully opened, not yet stuffed. This is what the packing pods looks like size-wise. There's my hand for comparison. So I may just end up putting my quilt in one of these to begin with and putting maybe electronics and toiletries or clothing in the other. I'm not quite sure. Now I'm wishing I had another one. So <laughs> we'll see how we get along. Totally missed that right there. These are size large, so I got two large. I might put clothing electronics in one and then my quilt in the other. I think that might work well. So the bag is supposed to be water resistant, I believe. You can see there's some type of plastic um, thing down on the bottom, like a plastic layer. And this is actually really tough. I would be surprised if I spend any amount of time and I it's gonna penetrate this. Um, but I do like redundancies because I'm carrying down and that's what's going to keep me warm at night. So I don't want to risk that, but I think you probably would be okay with this. Okay. So it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be to get my entire quilt in here. This is what it looks like. There's still a little bit of wiggle room and it will still mash down because I'm going to be putting other things on top of it. So that's what it looks like. So let's see how it fits in the pack. I need to put this camera down and hold the backpack. Okay, so there it is, a little tighter in the middle of the pack, but it will fall down about a quarter of the way and then it needs a little bit of a push. Loops on the side, I'm assuming, are to grab it and be able to pull it out effectively because it's in there pretty snugly. Okay, so in this other one that still has plenty of room, I have my toiletry bag, my pillow, um, because that's always laying loose in there and I don't really care for things being loose. My cook pot, spoon, which also tends to be loose in there. Some electronics that I'll need for the evening. Giving this guy kind of a, a second chance. I took it on my recent trip to test out the tent and the new sleeping pad. So I'm also gonna put the drone, batteries, battery charger, and all that in here and see how that works out. So as you can see, even with all that stuff in there, there is a lot of room left. So whether or not this will be lighter weight than all of the individual little bags that I normally carry for all of that or not, 
I'll find out once I plug it all into lighter pack and I'll let you guys know. Okay, so not as light as backpacking, but I intend to make it lighter and more efficient um, in the future. But for now, this is what we have. I've got my toilet and shower shelter here, toilet here, toilet bags. There are chairs over there. A telescoping ladder for the tent, a table, and all kinds of doodads and good stuff in here. Freya's area is right there in the back. Got my backpack up there. Okay, so I have to go to the store and get some firewood because they do have a fire pit. I think I might do like eggs and bacon tomorrow morning and then something to carry food in, maybe some ice. So I'm gonna get on that. Okay guys, we arrived at our camp. We've got about two hours before sunset. Got the little toilet area up. Freya's little bed is all set. The Durston X Mid Pro 2 is all set up. This will actually be the first night that I have spent in it. The setup this time around actually went really, really smooth. So um, I'm kind of super encouraged by how easy it went up. It is kind of windy tonight, so I think it'll be a good test of the X-Mid in wind. This is really sturdy on both sides. Super sturdy. There we go. Okay, so it is... 444 and I've just attached the little Thermarest pump. You guys may remember I did a review on this a couple years ago and I didn't feel like it was worth the wait for how long it took to blow up the pad but for campouts where I'm carrying everything in the car and you know weight is not such an issue I'm trying it and seeing you know whether or not I can actually use it so We'll see how long it takes to inflate this pad. Okay, it's 451 and it's looking pretty good. Um, last time I used this, I ended up having to finish it off by just blowing it up manually because the pump just wouldn't go anymore and it still needed some loft to it. So we'll see how it works. Yeah, still, still needs a little bit of help. So we are on a farm. It's nice and breezy right now. Okay, so I stopped it at 455, so I don't think it's going to fill up anymore. I do believe that is a turkey. If you can see them, there they are. There's a couple of dogs on the neighboring property and they just ran over here because they saw my dog and my dog is not super welcoming of other dogs. So if they keep coming over here, I may have to pack up and go because that's not going to be a good situation. I'm using my new Hilltop Packs flat bottom food bag today. I actually purchased this one um, because of the flat bottom and because it is a little bit shorter than the one I took with me last year. That one is a little bit taller so you can actually hang it up. They have a bear bag kit and everything that I will probably get also. Um, so this is the first time using this as well.
So tonight we are gonna do some beef stew. I got my water boiling here. The other lighter thing didn't work. This is the only one that worked out of the two that I brought. It is kind of windy tonight, so I don't know whether or not we're going to need the citronella candle and the other mosquito repellent. It might be okay. <music> some cute little cabins on the back of the property. Someone is trying to get my food. No, ma'am. Got a fire going. Sun's going down. It's nice and cool out. What you doing? Why don't you come lay on your blanket? It's warmer over here. So it's starting to get a little windy. The wind is picking up. Um, it died down for a little bit there and now it's starting to pick up again. I'm about to put out this fire here in a few minutes and get in the tent and watch some TV. Okay, so this is my first night sleeping inside the Xmid Pro 2. This is how much room I've got along the side with this Thermarest NXT. Um, underneath it, I have the Gossamer Gear Thin Light Foam Pad. I figured with the extra R value of this pad, I won't need the thicker one that always seems to be a little bit of a problem to carry. So this is what we look like up here. This is my quilt. So I'm going to open this up and get comfy. So I've got a good deal of room over here, a good deal of room over here, and of course the very large spacious vestibules. morning everybody um it was a bit of a rough night of sleep um not a lot of sleep <laughs> a lot of tossing and turning um just couldn't just couldn't get to sleep um so a couple of things that i've noticed um right off the bat that I want to talk about. So if you've seen my previous videos, you know that um, my quilt a lot of times was right up against the wall of my z packs duplex. So as you can see, I've got a good bit of room still. Um, I'm in Florida, so there is some condensation. So the wide pad, yes, my arms sit on it, but it's right at the edge. So, oh, my stomach. So yeah, my arms were right at the edge, but they do sit on the pad and they won't roll off. Roll off. Um, this is the sill nylon floor. You can see that the grass underneath is wet, but I don't feel any condensation on this. This is not wet. 
I was wondering about that. Feels fine. Nothing on here. So underneath, I've got, where is it? Underneath, I've got the Gossip of Gear Thin Light Foam Pad, and this is how thick it is. It's really thin. So my, um, my sleeping pad, some of the air has gone out of it, um, and I can feel the cold through it. So, um, just to be fair though, I did not wear any layers. I have short sleeves on. I brought no socks. So, if I'd had more layers, I probably would have been warmer, but is that going to be enough warmth in Scotland when it is really cold? So, <laughs> I don't know. Um, might have to test it out some more, um, but yeah, I mean, I am, I don't know. I'm undecided as to whether or not this feels much warmer. Um, what I might have to do next time is bring both pads and try them both out on the same trip. You know, maybe do a multi-day thing or just switch them out um, and see what happens, so. Mm -hmm. But as far as the tent goes, you can see I have a lot of room. Got a lot of room over here. Got a lot of room up here. I mean, I can't even touch that. There's a handy pocket there. And a handy pocket there. It's very roomy. got a nice sunrise behind me right here. Um, I'm gonna get up and start getting things packed up because I have a lot of stuff to do today and it is a fairly early checkout here. Um, I think what I might do is try to find a different spot to do breakfast because I do want to go by a coffee shop first and get some coffee because I didn't bring any Splenda. I brought tea, I brought a tea bag but I didn't bring any sweetener for it, so that ain't gonna happen. The sides, you know, you are sleeping on a diagonal, so you have to remember that. And it does take a little bit, you know, to, to get your brain thinking in that direction because even though you set the tent up in a square, the inner is on a bit of a diagonal. So it takes a minute, <laughs> it takes a minute. So this, if I were to sit up, you know, it is pretty close, but this. I mean, it's crazy the amount of room you have. The vestibule area, I think, is my favorite. How <clears throat> how big it is. There's a lot of room out there. Another thing that I am thinking about taking to Scotland with me this season, along with the X-Mid Pro 2, is this jacket. This is a puppy jacket from Paka or Paka. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Um, it's P-A-K-A. -A. I do know there's another company um, that spells their name P-A-C-A, but this is P-A-K-A. -A. It is lightweight. It's really comfortable. You can see it's really nicely made. Stretchy around the sleeves stretchy around the hood. It also has on the hood, a little drawstring pull at the back. It's super comfortable, guys. Um, I wanted something that would rival my Patagonia Micro Puff because I am in a different season right now and I'm a little heavier than I was that first trip. So that jacket doesn't fit me so well anymore. This one is what I picked to test out 
ahead of my trips this year in Scotland. It is 48 degrees here today. Um, it should warm up to about 70 or so, um, but here in the next hour or two, it's gonna to be too warm for this, but I figured this would be a good test of this jacket. It's quite warm. Um, I will put all the stats and everything on this particular puffer jacket down below in the description box, so check that out. This one has some really cool features, only the inside pockets. Here we go. We've got an inside zip pocket right here, which I love and there is also a big pocket right here which is to stuff the jacket in on itself so you can it has its own stuff sack complete with a drawstring which i love so it'll fold down really really small it is a chilly morning this morning and it's keeping me pretty warm so i am five foot four uh, about 153 pounds so this is a medium and it still has quite a bit of room in it i like a bigger jacket I don't like a super tight form-fitting jacket. I like some room, especially being that I'm gonna have layers on. I'm gonna have layers on under this. So I wanted a jacket that was a little bit bigger. I thought large is gonna be too big. Medium, I think, is just right. That's the Apu Puffer. Okay, so my quilt is now in here. So a couple of observations. This is gonna take up more space in the inside of my pack than the stuff sack that I've been carrying this in. Plus, the propensity to nick it with this zipper while you're stuffing that thing in there. I don't, I don't like that. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this for clothing and just put my quilt in its original stuff sack since that stuff sack is pretty small. Okay, so now that I've gotten up off of this thing, you can see how much it is deflated. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'll have to try it out a couple more times. Um, but this guy under here obviously does not offer as much, um, warmth as the thicker pad does. I think this will be a really good choice for me for the PCT. Um, maybe not so much for Scotland. Um, I'll have to try everything, wearing my layers and all of that and see if that makes any difference. But for 48 degrees here, um, it's going to be pretty similar when I go to Scotland. Um, so, I don't know. <laughs> come in here. No, I'm packing everything up. She did have her nose sticking down there. I'm packing up. We're going to go do breakfast in a little bit. All right, let me finish. So I'm going to see if I can't like pack this up toward the back. Yeah, it scratches super easy, or it, it marks up super easy. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can like push this back toward the back of the pack and pack it that way. If not, it's gonna get rolled up and probably put on the side because that might aggravate me. I've got this cool trash bag that goes on the back. I was looking at something like Trasheroo or something like that, but those are much heavier. Um, so this cool bag, super strong. Um, spider web shade makes these and you can have them um, you can have your logo and stuff put on them this one I put on backwards um, has the logo of the shop that did the work on the Jeep but it is super well made you just run the run the elastics through here and it just hangs off your back tire so you don't have to have smelly garbage in your car which is awesome It might be a little hard to tell from this angle, but the bathtub does sit on an angle as compared to how you have the tent laid out. I think it's a little easier to tell this way. Freya messing up my focus. There we go. 
So you've got your corners. So you lay it out in a square pattern. And when you put your poles up in there, it's, you know, just lift it up and the inner is on an angle. You can probably tell from that edge right there. I'm pretty confident with it. I don't think that I'm gonna have issue with it. There's no more condensation on it. Condensation is all gone. Florida's quite wet, but it is nice and dry. So we're gonna take it down now, aren't we Freya? You ready to go? She's ready to go. <laughs> And I know they're, uh, I know they redid the magnet design from um, the last X-Mid design or a couple of X-Mid designs ago. Instead of one magnet, they now have two and they do appear to be pretty strong. I mean, it's got a, it's got a good hold there. Um, I've not had them fall down yet. I've only used the tent this one time. I've set it up a few times, um, but the magnets are pretty strong. Seems that I have misplaced the tips to my trekking poles. I know I can get some more, but I remember putting them in something and going, yeah, I need to remember this is where I put these. So hopefully they turn up. I just used my phone to put my contact in, so success. This right here bugs me. However, when you are, hang on, when you're in the cold, you will want that. You're gonna want that. But when it's unzipped, it, it kind of bugs me because it's on me. I know, first world problems. As you can see, my organization leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> That's one of the things I'm gonna have to work on for sure. This thing right here, I would say is the most frustrating thing about taking down camp because it is really hard to fit this thing back into this bag. It's a pain in the ass. So, works great. It's fantastic to have, pain in the ass. All right, that's us all packed up. I just put Freya in the back of the Jeep. She's ready to go. Ready to go get some breakfast.